What's up, guys? So we head into week two. A big talking point has been quarterback. Who are we going to roll with? We got Joe Flacco, we got Mike White, and we got our boy Chris Traveler back on the practice squad. And first things first, yes, I was one. I was chanting Mike White at the game, of course, but it was mainly just out of frustration. So we're mad. We were angry. Joe Flacco didn't play well. A lot of that was offensive line drops. Whatever the off the offense in general didn't play well, and and if. Fair or not, a lot of that blame often goes to the signal caller. And in that game, it was Joe Flacco. But I don't know if we want to just make our decision on who plays quarterback over the next few weeks until Zach gets back just out of being pissed off (laughs) because of one really sloppy game. I think if we zoom out a little bit and we look at Joe Flacco, you know, forget about what he did in Denver and Baltimore. Like He's a completely different guy. But just what he's done with the Jets, three seasons, he's a little over 60% completion percentage, 10 touchdowns. Four picks. It's not bad. It's not bad for a backup. It really isn't. And here's what I'm willing to do. I'm willing to give Joe Flacco the first half against Cleveland. I'm going to start him against Cleveland, and I'm going to give him the first half. And if it looks how it did against Baltimore, I got to pull him. Now, who do I pull him for? I mean, the thing is, the number one thing that was glaring to me with Joe Flacco was the lack of mobility. I think it's it's so hard to win games in the modern NFL without a mobile quarterback. Everything on offense is predicated the way offensive play callers, young offensive minds are learning to design offenses, the way offensive linemen are learning to block, the way uh, wide receivers learn to kind of go into a, a scramble drill after the play collapses. And all of that is predicated on you know a certain threshold of mobility. I mean, Joe Flacco, uh, I watched the, or we watched the Colts game. Matt Ryan, <laughs> Matt Ryan looked like, Michael Vick compared to Joe Flacco. Man, so that's tough. It's tough if you have a complete statue, and that's Joe Flacco. But is Mike White's not mobile, and Mike White has a weaker arm than Joe Flacco. So I don't know if realistically Mike White gives us a better chance to beat Cleveland. I don't know if I have any evidence that really suggests that. And then Streveler, <laughs> I, I mean, he's big. He can run. He's a tough dude. He's got that dog in him, and I get all of that, but that's not happening. Realistically, I I can't imagine a scenario in which they do that because Chris Trevler, all of the guys that he threw all those you know clutch passes to in the preseason, they're on the practice squad, or they're like on other teams, or they're still free agents. He has like no reps with the first or second team, no regular season experience at all. So, as much as we were killing them for bench and Flacco. I mean, could you imagine it as a fan base, if they were to go out there and start like a third string who was signed to be a camp arm, all due respect. And then he goes out there and like throws four picks. We would kill them. We would kill them. So uh, I think Joe Flacco gets a leash of the first half against Cleveland and hopefully he bounces back. But either way, the offensive line's got to play better, man. Uh, Lakin Tomlinson and George Fant. Those weren't the guys I was worried about. I was worried about the rookie Max Mitchell (laughs) and he actually held his own. So we got to block better no matter who it is. I'll give Joe Flacco the first half against Cleveland, and hopefully we can clean some stuff up.